Okay, guys, welcome to episode two of three for the table saw build. I will be answering quite a few questions at the ep end of episode three, so stick around for that one. I'm using oversized holes with bolts for the outfit table. This way I can adjust it up and down depending on the location to make sure I have it dead flat to the table itself. The outfeed table is made with regular soft plywood and I'm using Craig screws and three inch wide boards as the support braces. So the completed outfeed table should look like this. I still have to do the extension wing and I am recording off my phone because my Canon T3i or 600D has run into issues again where the memory card door thinks it's open so it won't turn on. A lot of problems with this camera. I do not suggest you buy one. Maybe go for something else or maybe you've had a lot of luck with them. But the bolts connect onto there I also added some support braces here to get the thing nice and true. So all we have to do now is do the extension wing, do the fence, route the slots, give it a coat of varnish, water base for the top, oil base for the sides, maybe add some shelves, add a door with dust collection and we're done. So the bulk of the build is now complete. I wasn't quite happy with the rip capacity of this table saw, so I decided to make a small outfeed table. I did use 18mm thick hardwood plywood for the top. I wanted to have birch plywood, but a $254 plus 10% tax plus $50 delivery, it was a little bit out of my budget. I'm cutting all the parts for the fence. This is the same 18 millimeter plywood that I'm using for the tabletop. Bit of a fail here. I thought the dust was clogging up and stopping the saw, but as you can see, it's actually the power cable. Whoops. The fence railing is 50 millimeters wide or two inches. I'm using a different type of glue here rather than type on because in Australia, unfortunately, it's very limited on where you can purchase it. So they were out of stock. Double-sided tape will hold the two fence pieces together to pre-drill the holes. I'm going to glue up the fence and let it dry completely before driving in the screws. Reason being, when you drive screws into plywood, it tends to find its way to the nearest piece of ply. So more often than not, you get this little piece overhanging here. And being such a precise instrument, so to speak, it really needs to be dead on. So if I can let it dry completely, then apply the screws, it's going to stop it from trying to find a place to sit. So that way the fence should be completely flush, which is really important. Gluing up the fence was a little bit scary, but I used a generous amount of glue and clamped all the pieces before driving the screws. It's very important that this part is straight and 90 degrees to the surface or it will affect the quality of cut.
I'm using some scrap pieces of plywood as the knobs for the handles. The homemade disc sander comes in handy here. You can check out that video on my channel. So I had two failed attempts of making the fence clamp. The first one I epoxied in, turned out to be junk, didn't work. The second one, I didn't drill wide enough holes, so when I attached these insert nuts, it just shredded completely and I couldn't put it in any further or take it out. The third one, I drilled a larger hole and I managed to fit them in. The assembly of the knobs for the fence clamp is very straightforward, it's just threaded rod with a few washers and some nuts. Pre-drill and countersink some oversized holes to allow a washer and a Craig screw. This is for minor adjustments. Once the fence is lined up, drive in the screws. The most stressful part of the build is now complete. We just have to do some minor adjustments, then we can make our first cut. The final part of this table saw build can be found in a link on your screen. Thanks for watching.